Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a favourite things video for you, so I'm sharing some of the things that I've been loving lately, some of which are books, some of which aren't books, and I also thought we'd just have a little chat chatty catch up together because it's been a little while. I have been so busy lately, I'm working on a real rebrand of my website and taking it in a slightly different direction and I have a lot of content that I'm planning and preparing as well as designing a whole new website right now and there's lots that I think you're going to really enjoy that I can't wait to share with you in the autumn and moving into winter but I've just been head down working on this so much this summer because I really want to get as much as possible done for autumn and I'm just really looking forward to sharing it all with you. I can't really talk, I don't want to talk about it too much until it's actually launched but like I said I'm just planning some content and a little bit of a new direction that I'm excited to share and that will affect some of the content that I'll be posting on YouTube as well so I am looking forward to doing a few more vlogs and things like that in the autumn but I just can't do that at the moment because all of my time is being taken up with getting things into place for the autumn when I'll be actually ramping up content quite a bit more then. So thanks for bearing with me this summer. I hope that you're all well and keeping as cool and as safe as possible. The temperatures have been soaring even in Yorkshire. I'm so glad it's cooler today and I can enjoy my cup of tea. <laughs> Mm. We even had it go up to sort of 39, 40 degrees and I'm so grateful for where we live because in an old house it doesn't get too hot but it has been hot even for us and I've had trouble sleeping this week so I'm sure many of you have had as well. Um, but it, we are getting some rain now which is lovely, the grass is so brown that we definitely need some rain. Anyway, I'm excited to share some of the things I've been loving lately with you, but just before I do that, I also wanted to share some comfort book club news. So if you've been reading Joy in the Morning by P.G. Woodhouse, which is the comfort book club choice for July, then if you wish to contribute a voice message, please send that in to me by next Wednesday, which I think is the 27th of July. So just to remind you of that, I'll put a link in the description box about how to record a voice message and also more about the Comfort Book Club if you don't know what I'm talking about. And then um, I also have to make an announcement about August's book club choice, Father by Elizabeth von Arnhem. I actually need voice messages for this by August 12th. And I will be putting up the Comfort Book Club discussion video for this later in August. I think it will be on the 31st of August that the video will actually go live. But my mum and I need to record it way earlier in the month because we're actually going to be away um, in August and my mum also has a hospital appointment, fortunately nothing serious but she has an appointment and things that you know she needs to do so we essentially need to record early ourselves in order to have a video going up in August at all. So absolutely understand if people can't read it in time, I thought it would still be nice to do a video and still do an August book pick rather than doing not one rather than not doing one at all but if you can't read it in time to do a voice message then that's no problem I thought it would just still be nice to have a pick this month for August so um, I hope you'll still enjoy reading it but if you do manage to read it please send me a voice message by the 12th of August because I'll be recording very very soon after the 12th. Okay, so that was the Comfort Book Club news. Now on to some of my favourite things. It was my mum's birthday at the end of June and I got her two 
presents that were sort of especially successful and they were my main presents to her and I wanted to share them with you because she was really thrilled with them and one of them was this Emma Bridgewater radio in the beautiful strawberry pattern I think this is my mum's favourite Emma Bridgewater pattern she just loves it and she's been wanting an Emma Bridgewater radio for ages and um, she's been loving this it's so nice to have given her something that she's now enjoying using every day I hadn't realized in a way how much she would enjoy it because I listen to things just on my phone and I carry my phone around with me all the time but my mum listens to the actual radio a lot more than I do I mainly listen to things like podcasts or play it again stuff or audiobooks and my mum likes to actually listen to the radio so she's been really enjoying having this, being able to put it on in the living room or the kitchen and yeah it was a real hit with her and actually I've been really enjoying using it a bit too because it has Bluetooth features so I can connect my phone to it and that's really fun and it means we can listen to things together a bit more as well which is really nice. So that was a really big hit and then I got her this beautiful jug. I'm going to film a little close-up of it so you can see it without me having to try and lift this up and show you because it's very heavy. But it's an absolutely gorgeous jug. It's done by Sussex Lusterware which is a pottery company that I've really enjoyed supporting over the years. I have another of their jugs and a couple of mugs by them and they collaborated with an artist, Britta Grandstrom, I hope I'm saying her last name right, and my mum absolutely adores her artwork. I couldn't afford an original artwork though, um, so I sort of did the next best thing, which is get this jug that was a collaboration between Britta and Sussex Usterwear. And it features all three of the Bronte sisters and even Branwell Bronte is right at the bottom of the jug. And it, they're just charmingly done. We're really thrilled. Of course, being in Yorkshire, we really enjoy that connection to the Brontes. And I just thought my mum would really be thrilled with this jug. And she is. And we have it in the living room where she can, well, where both of us can see it sort of every day because we often have morning cups of tea in here and then we're always in here in the evening. So it's something that we've both got to enjoy, which is lovely. But Sussex Lusterwear are doing quite a few of these um, Bronte pieces. I think they've got some smaller jugs and you can also, I think, still commission one of the bigger jugs like this one and they've got some little plates and things like that. I'll link to them obviously in the description box because if you're a Bronte fan, then I think what they're doing is really beautiful and I really recommend checking it all out. And then just this morning, I received No Castanets at the Wells by Lorna Hill. This has just been republished by Girls Gone By Publishers. I take the photos for their Instagram account and they republish a lot of the books I loved as a child and still enjoy rereading even as an adult. And they've republished quite a few of the ballet books by Lorna Hill. I grew up reading this series, I just adored it, I was a ballet mad teenager and I loved ballet books, Lorna Hills were really my favourites along with the Drina books and of course some of the Noel Stratfield stories and this was first published I think in about 1950 I can't remember exactly when it first came out, 1953 and it's just been republished by Girls Gone By and Clarissa Quidland, who is one of the founders, asked me to write the foreword for this. So it's my first foreword in a book, which was really exciting for me. Um, they also asked me to include a photo 
of myself from my dancing days as a teenager, so that's me in there. And I really enjoyed writing this forward all about how the books inspired me as a young woman, both with my love for ballet, but also my love for the British countryside. These books you can really enjoy even if you're not a ballet domain, you can just enjoy them for the story, for the characters, and a lot of it is actually set in Northumberland. And she writes so lovingly of the countryside, and she had me yearning for the British countryside even as a teenager living in New York. <laughs> so I do owe a lot to these books, they inspired me in many different ways, so it was a real treat to write the foreword to this one, and if you're interested in reading it then obviously I'll link to it in the description box as well. And then I think the last time I did a favourite things video, I can't remember now if that was in May or June, but I spoke about um, joining a sort of stationery box, a monthly stationery box by Brooke Marie, and I said that I would sort of update you on how I found it. And I've really loved it, I've been so pleased, I've got both uh, June and July here to show you. Some of them I've already used, the cards already, um, but June had this really pretty little teacup and tea set, which I thought was really sweet, and a little postcard with a Victoria sponge, some sheets of strawberry writing paper which I really loved, and some pretty cards, so one again with the teapot and teacup, a happy birthday card, there was another card with the dragonfly but I've sent that to someone already, and each month I get a little June intentions um, card which is sweet and little nature note. And I think there was a little bookmark as well, but I think I'm using that at the moment, so I don't have it here. And then July had a bit of a seaside, Ooh, see there's one of the book bookmarks. July had a bit of a seaside theme. I've actually used quite a bit of the July cards already, but there's still a few here. And here's the little nature notes uh, poster for July. So, They've been bringing me so much happiness, actually. I'm going to look out for some more stationery subscription boxes because I've so enjoyed getting these each month. It's just been such a fun little treat to get in the post. And it's inspired me to send off cards to people as well. So that's just been really fun and has been making me really happy lately. So I really do recommend hers for any stationery lovers out there. Brooke Marie illustration and again I'll link it in the description box. And then one book that I've been really loving lately and has been such an appropriate read for the past few days is The Sultry Month, Scenes of London, Literary Life in 1846 by Alethea Hayter. And there's a foreword by Francesca Wade who wrote another group biography, Square Haunting. I interviewed Francesca about that book when it first came out, I really loved it. It's all about a square in Bloomsbury and the women who lived in that square, um, women like Dorothy L. Sears and Virginia Woolf, and it's a really fascinating history, not only of some of these women, but also of this part of London in the interwar years. So I really recommend that. and. I can't wait to read the foreword, I'm going to read it after I've uh, read, finished the book, I'm about halfway through, and I'm just loving it so far, it's so fascinating, um, she writes about people like Elizabeth Barrett, not yet Elizabeth Barrett Browning, she's actually engaged to Browning secretly at the time. Um, that Althea, Alethea Hayter is writing about, and the Carlyles feature, and just a lot of the uh, sort of literati of London society at that time, a lot of painters as well as a lot of writers, and very, very fascinating and so interesting, the idea to choose to write about one particular summer, and a summer in London during a heat wave. 
and what these people were doing in those months. And it's just so interesting. One of the first group biographies, I think this was originally published in the 1960s, and it's just been reissued by Faber. So I'm really loving it so far. I want to finish it this weekend and I really recommend it. And then another thing I wanted to talk about that I've been really enjoying lately is the idea of micro baking. I hadn't come across this idea before, but I chanced upon some blog posts by Joy the Baker and she's been really pioneering this idea of micro baking. So baking things like two muffins or one big cookie or like one cinnamon roll or things that essentially you can either just make for one person for yourself or maybe just for two people. And for my mum and I, that's actually really fun to do sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to bake a whole sort of tray of muffins, for instance, but it's nice sometimes to just bake a couple and be able to enjoy that. Obviously, this isn't for everyone, this idea, but I've been having fun with it and sort of playing around with some different recipe ideas myself. And I hope to sort of write more about that on the blog coming up, but I'm, I don't have time at the moment, but I've just been enjoying experimenting a bit. And I really like this idea of micro baking and just baking a small amount of something sometimes, because although you can generally freeze things or whatever, um, if you're not baking for a lot of people, sometimes it's nice to just do a little bit of something and enjoy that. So I'll put again the recipe that I've been using from Joy the Baker in the description box if you want to check that out. And she's got a few micro baking recipes on her website so you can have a bit of an explore if the ideal if the idea appeals to you. And then a magazine that I've discovered recently is this one called Wild Flower. I think it comes out every two months. So this is the June issue that I've been reading and enjoying. And then there's a new issue coming out in August. And if you love magazines really about English country living, then I think you would really enjoy this one. Um, this issue had a really interesting article on Kelmscott, the former home of Jane and William Morris in, in Oxfordshire. And I really enjoyed that. And there are some recipes in here. There's a bit about fashion. There are some other articles really related to English country living and places in the English countryside. And it's just one that I really enjoyed flicking through and reading and I'll definitely be looking out for the next issue in August and I thought some of you might enjoy this as well so I thought I would mention it. And then I got one cookbook recently which I've been really enjoying. I haven't made anything from it yet. It's been so hot that I haven't wanted to cook much. We've basically just been eating salads and sandwiches. Um, but the cookbook I got is Notes from a Small Kitchen Island by Deborah Robertson. And I follow Deborah Robertson's free Substack newsletter. And it's really good. I really recommend it. She's now living in France. I think she wrote this cookbook while she was still in London. But she's now in France and every week for her free subscribers, she sends out a newsletter sharing a photo of what food she bought at the market every week and there are recipe suggestions, generally one recipe and maybe a little menu suggestion in each newsletter. I really enjoy them, she's such a sort of down to earth lovely writer as well and that tone of her writing style really comes out in the book too so this has been a real pleasure to read and I've earmarked so many recipes that I want to try there's one um, cheddar, cheese, chive and marmite scones, which sounds so good. I love savoury scones as well as sweet ones. So I can't wait to make those sometime soon. But there are just so many great sounding recipes in here. And she just writes in such an 
accessible, easygoing, friendly kind of way that I just love the whole tone to this cookbook as well. So that was a really great recent purchase. And then one final thing that was such a lovely surprise is um, a friend of my mum's and a friend of mine as well uh, sent me this beautiful Radley bag. A bit hard to show you <laughs> sitting this close, but hopefully you can you can see it. This was this was such a lovely surprise because. We have had a few more friends sort of visiting the area, which has been so nice. Obviously, people can travel a lot more again. So we've seen old friends from France, old friends from New Mexico visiting, and that's been amazing. And some of our old friends from France came and I was able to help our friend with a new logo that she needed creating for a new website um, that she's planning a new venture that she's doing in, in her retirement now, which is very exciting. And I was really glad that I could help a little bit with the logo design. And then just as a surprise, she sent me this lovely bag as a thank you. And I'm so thrilled with it. I love Radley bags. And the color on this is gorgeous. It's such a practical size. I've been using it so much already and really nice inside. Got a few things in there, but <laughs> you can see it's just a really nice sized bag. So I was absolutely thrilled with that. It was just an amazing surprise to get it in the post. And I'm just, yeah, using it so much it's so practical so that has definitely been another real favorite thing that i've been loving lately anyway i hope that you enjoyed this video and it maybe gave you a little bit of inspiration i'd love to know about some of the things that you've been loving lately too and i hope you all have a wonderful weekend ahead of you if you want to make sure that uh, you're the first to sort of hear about um, some of the things I have planning and will be launching in the next sort of few weeks and start of autumn, then do make sure you're following me on my Instagram, Randa's Bookcase, as I'll post first there about it. But yes, I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. Thanks so much for watching. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking my face over here. But I'll see you again next week for the Comfort Book Club. Goodbye.